Hello, my name's Tipper, and today we're going to be talking about Appalachian language, specifically words and phrases that start with the letter J. For reference, I'm going to be using the Dictionary of Smoky Mountain English. So the first one on our list is a jackhouse, which is an outhouse or a privy. 1998 Montgomery Collection, it was also known as a small barn where the stud jack mule is housed, and that was by Bush told uh, Montgomery that, Michael Montgomery. So a jack house, I don't think I've ever heard that one. Jack is used often though in a lot of different ways in Appalachian language. Um, there's a lot in the dictionary. Here's another one, jack-legged. So if you're jack-legged, that's a person who has little competence or training in a trade, skill, or profession, such as carpentry, law, medicine, auto mechanics, or preaching. So in 1936, this was a quote, little old jack-legged preacher, and that was from Madison County, also was known in Swain County, North Carolina. Then it goes on to tell different places where it was documented. Spruce Pine, North Carolina, Maryville, Tennessee, Cherokee County, North Carolina. Um, and then also in Brasstown was a doctor who is not very capable or who does not have a very good reputation. So that was from here in Brasstown. That was a jack leg doctor. Another jack is jack oak. A jack oak is any oak tree of little value or inferior quality, especially the black jack oak. So 1913, Morley, Carolina Mountains, of the numberless hardwood trees that flourish here, the oaks perhaps stand first because of their numbers and the many forms in which they appear from the lordly white oak to the little ridiculously jack oak. So I have heard of a jack oak before. I've heard that one used. Here's another one, a jack pine. So a jack pine, as you might guess from the jack oak entry, is a pine, a small pine tree of little value. 1958, I don't know where there is any jack pine, what we call jack pine or yellow pine down in that hollow. Another one, jack rocks. I always liked this one. Uh, it's not one that I'm familiar with, but I like the entry. So jack rocks is a noun, a children's game with five round stones and a ball. Makes you think of jacks, doesn't it? Which again would be, it's very similar, jack rocks or just jacks. Its object is to see who can bounce, first bounce the ball and pick up all the stones before it hits the ground, exactly like Jack's. 1997, King Mountain folks. Throughout the year, she and her three sisters played with paper dolls, played hopscotch, pushed a scotch wheel, and played Jack Rocks. Mama said she'd get so tired of hearing us say, no slips, no slips. Campbell said they called out no slips if they dropped the ball or missed the Jack Rock so they would not have to give up their turn. No slips. Another one, this one is still real common where I live, is to jack up. So if you jack up somebody, you scold them, find fault with them, bear down on them. I would even go so far as to say maybe you're getting some fisty cuffs with them. You jack them up. So 1939 Hall Collection, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. He jack up the best hand he had. That was Lee Reagan. 1990 or 1966 to put pressure on someone to do something that he ought to have done but hasn't and that's in Cherokee County North Carolina still alive and well here today in uh, 2021 so 1976 Garber Mountainese old lady Miller sure did jack up them youngins for walking on her grass so that one's still still really common here the next entry is for an interesting one. It's Jacob's Onions, and I've never heard this one before. It's a green onion. 1975, Perky, Madison County. A variety of vegetables grew in long, neat rows. Tender green onions called Jacob's Onions. Peas, beets, carrots, radishes, lettuce, beans, parsnips, tomatoes, cucumbers, and sweet and Irish potatoes. I will never forget the endless bundles of crisp spring onions with their long white heads and slender green blades, which my mother prepared for market. Mama called them Jacob's onions. I don't know why, unless it was because they were so prolific. Mm, doesn't all that wonderful garden stuff just sound so good here in the winter? Makes me wish I had those long rows of all those, all those fresh vegetables to eat. But I, I wrote about Jacob's onions on the blind pig and the acorn several times over the years because that was an entry that jumped out at me from the dictionary. And uh, not many other people were familiar with it either. 
jaggedy. So if jaggedy, you might guess that one, it's an adjective of metal, wood, or, or anything, could be clothing or whatever, having a jag, um, jagged edge, but we add the we, Y onto it. So jaggedy, instead of just saying it's jagged, we would say jaggedy. The same way as stripedy, that's another one. If something is striped, we would say stripedy, it's stripedy. A jake, all you turkey hunters will know that's a young turkey, but according to the dictionary, it was also a rustic person, especially one who is uncouth or inexperienced, which I guess that goes right along with a jake being a young turkey. A jake leg is a noun, and that is poor quality liquor. So uh, let's see, Thunder Road, jake leg was the low grade sugar liquor, and that was 1997. Montgomery Collection was known to Cardwell, Ledford, and Weaver. Also, Jake legs, Jake walk, paralysis or incapacitation of the legs caused by drinking poor quality liquor. Yikes, that would be terrible. 1981, Dumas, Appalachian Glossary, paralysis of a lower extremity caused by drinking a certain variety of regionally available illegally manufactured whiskey. So that would be some um, moonshine that you would not want to drink for sure. Jam up is the next one. So that's an adverb phrase, completely, extremely, jam up. Um, so I have heard that one, but I would think that's common way beyond Appalachia. So 1966, Medford, Old Starlin. According to the book, Washington was awful good general and jam up smart man. So he was a jam up smart man. 1996, it was known to Cardwell, Jones, Norris, and Oliver. And then in 2001, from the Montgomery file, he's an all-round jam-up good fellow. So I, I would hear that like maybe somebody would say, we had a jam-up time, or it was a jam-up show that they put on. So that one's still kind of common where I'm at. You'll have to tell me if it's common where you're at. So here's an interesting one. Jaw is the sharp part of a steel bear trap that snaps shut on an animal's leg, the jaw of the trap. But also, more common, the one I was thinking about, is to speak in an animated, spiteful, or quarrelsome, quarrelsome manner. So, uh, you two might jaw together some other day, it was one of the quotes. 1939, far Tennessee mountain regions, chased jacktails. They jawed and cussed a right smart while till finally they quit and got started on down again. So they were, they were in a fuss. 1962, Dykeman, tall woman, everything hateful to my soul, you've jawed about it here today. So she was tired of whoever that was jawing or he was tired of whoever that was jawing. So uh, this is probably the more common one though. The second entry for it is to talk idly and at length. So that would be more common. Like, oh, they're down there jawing. They've been down there all day. Or I stopped by there and he wouldn't quit jawing and I had to stay two hours listening to him. So uh, 1973, Medford, Long Hard Road. The drivers would likely sit down over a chew of tobacco, jaw for a while, and then go on their separate way. So that one's the most common here where I'm at. Jaw back, that's another one uh, kind of the similar, is to talk back. So maybe you're, if your teenagers ever jaw back to you or argue back with you. So that was known to eight consultants. I've not heard that one as much. So then the next entry is really fun. So it's a jaybird, of course. Um, it's a, a jaybird is a blue jay, so a very common bird, used, but it's used in various similes. So a jaybird is a blue jay, and then that jaybird uh, term for it is used in a lot of different similes in Appalachia. So uh, he's as antic as a jaybird when he takes the notion. 1940 Hans Hawks Dunn, they're always the jaybirds trying to take a bath in the water bucket. 1952, Brown, North Carolina folklore, as happy as a jaybird, as naked as a jaybird, as naked as a picked jaybird, as naked as a jaybird, um, as saucy as a jaybird, get along about as well as a jaybird does with a sparrow hawk, as spry as a jaybird in a wild cherry time, so that would you be really spry then. 1956, Hall Collection, Del Rio, Tennessee, as naked as a jaybird, Again, a quote from Dykeman, tall woman, Mark's always speaking of her eyes, too, and the way she clings to him, the way she's so quick to walk, and she talks already like a jaybird chattering. Well, he thinks she's mighty nigh perfection itself. So he was, he was smitten. He was in love. 
So I live with two jaybirds. I live with two of them, Corey and Katie. So those are, those are my jaybirds. Have you ever heard of the gym jams? Have you ever had the gym jams? That's the next entry, and that's anxiety or restlessness. Uh, Mirandy Jane have fairly got the gym jams, and that was from 1885. 1996 and 90 through 97, the Montgomery collection, it was known to Bush, Ellis, and Oliver, so the gym jams. It, very similar to that is if you have the jimmies. So jimmies, have the jimmies, is a verb phrase to be shaky from fear or anxiety, sometimes due to the consumption of alcohol. 1997 Montgomery collection was known to Adams, Brown, Bush, Cardwell, Oliver, and Weaver, Jim Jams, and the jimmies. The jimmies would be more, more common, I would guess. A Jimmy car house is a noun in logging a small portable house that can be placed on a railroad car or Jimmy and move to a new site when camp relocates. They just take their house with them. So 1970, Foster's uh, Walker Valley, they were houses up through there, but that was just one portable built house. All there was, the rest was Jimmy car. I call them Jimmy cars, you know. Uh, and then 1974, McCracken Logging, right back in that little hole right there is where his house sat, one of those little old Jimmy house cars. So that was, that's kind of reminds me of the boxcar children, if you ever read those books. A Jim Swinger is 1972 uh, Cooper, North Carolina Mountain Folklore, is a frock or long-tailed coat, and that's a noun. So a Jim Swinger was a long-tailed coat. I'd like to see one of those, wouldn't you? Job is the next one. So, of course, we know job is in the form of employment, but we'll often use it to mean like to poke or to strike. Well, the dictionary says verb, to strike, stab, or thrust. 1904 Cape Art Notebooks, job that wood into the stove so it won't fall out on the floor. 1939 Hall Collection, Nine Mile Creek, Tennessee. He run in there and jobbed his knife in him and the old bear jumped. He was very brave to run up to a bear and job him, wasn't he? That was Fawn's Cable. I've heard lots of hunting stories about him. Deep Creek, North Carolina. I got up on the drift, got me a pole, and got up on the drift and laid down my gun and commenced jobbing down through the drift. And that was Mark Cathy, another one you'll hear lots of stories about. 1942, Hall Phonetics, um, it was noted in there. In 1974, Fink's Bits of Mountain Speech, he was jobbed with a knife. Most commonly, I would hear that, when, especially when I was growing up, if a bunch of kids, you know, we were all running around wild playing, especially with a stick or something outside, you'd hear, stop running, you're going to job your eye out or job somebody's eye out. So that one's still... Uh, common here. You might be walking through the woods and say, oh, you know, that jobbed me, or I stepped on a stick and it jobbed in the bottom of my foot, or I stepped on a nail and it jobbed in the bottom of my foot. The next one is another job, a job of work, is a noun phrase, an assignment of work. 1942, Chase, Jack tells, so he decided to go off somewhere else and hunt him up a job of work. 1956, Hall Collection, that was noted in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, that was common. 1993, Whole Nother, it meant in that, that book's just noting that it meant employment other than farm work. So a job of work was employment other than farm work. Very interesting. I have never heard that one used before, but I am beyond grateful that my current job of work is to celebrate Appalachia. I couldn't be happier. Took me a long time to get here, but boy am I thrilled to be here, tickled to death, just, just plum tickled and proud to be the person here celebrating Appalachia with all of you. I hope that you'll leave a comment and let me know, did you know any of these words? Were there some of them you'd never heard of? Maybe you're like me and you'd read a few of them in a book or just tell me what you thought about them. And as always, I hope that you'll continue to drop back by and help me celebrate Appalachia, which always includes a lot of talking about that wonderful, rich, colorful Appalachian language.